Recording in progress. <laughs> All right, so Josh Gort, uh, one of my uh, best buddies in the business. Guy's been around uh better part of a decade. Was it, is it 11 or 12 years? What is it, Josh? 12 years. 12 years, yep. 12 years of rep. Uh, <laughs> I even had a stint in management there. Josh is over a million, over one million dollars in career sales when they send you that ring yet josh you got the bling where's the bling at do they nobody's reached out about a ring so uh i i don't even know what's uh happened right. with that well, we'll, we'll I, be I, ring in progress fitted for it or anything you know so may, maybe they just don't do that for uh for me <laughs> well, well ruby ring in progress for josh ruby ring in progress um but uh <laughs> but yeah josh is also a uh musician so josh aka ransom jones living out his dreams uh sings plays guitar so make, make sure to check him out on uh spotify and any other platforms there ransom jones uh josh just uh, always a great uh person to be around positive you know good energy at the booth uh, and I'm glad we got Josh on to uh, you know, hear hear him speak on uh, upserving a day. Um, so I hope you all soak it in, enjoy it, and uh, learn from someone who uh, has done this thing a time or two. So uh, without further ado, I'll kick it off to uh, Mr. Gort. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate all of you being here. and. Um, you know, it's exciting to have, you know, an audience to speak to. And I appreciate those on the West Coast getting up extra early to uh, be on this call as well. And then I know you're in the middle of SC2. So my my goal with this message is to really give you some some goods that you can implement immediately into your business, because this is one of the biggest game changers for your business. So just as an exercise, um, before I dive into the meat and potatoes of the content, I would like everyone to just think about how many orders you've had in your career, or even how many orders you've had this year, right? And imagine if you could increase the averages on those orders an extra 150 to $200. Right. So I want you to actually look at maybe how many orders you've had this year or do a quick estimate based on your sales and your average order. And, and just write down what is it that, uh, you've sold and number of orders. And then if you were to multiply the number of orders by an extra 200 CPO. And feel free to throw it in the chat too, by the way. And then if you really want to have fun with it, take that number of CPO that you'd have extra and times it by the extra commission that you would earn. So based on the percentage that you're at, what would be the extra commission that you would earn on that? Is that an exciting number for you all? Can you like re run through that one more time? Like you take your total number and your number of orders and your number of sales and then do what? Yeah, so just take number of orders and then okay. multiply it by 200. Okay, that's what it was. And then you could take that number and multiply it by your commission. And that's what doing, um, learning this content and increasing your average order through upserving will do. And guess the best part about that, if you can add 150 or 
to every order, guess how much more time it actually takes you to do that? Yeah, not, not very much. You know, two minutes, five minutes uh, to just pitch another package or pitch another program. And, you know, some of this is going to be mindset, some of it's going to be content. And then I'm also going to just share uh, Matt Graves. He gave a great talk at NET about upserving that I'm going to just share his notes because it has a lot of the kind of interest phrasing and one liners that you can be using. And as I was giving this, putting this message together, I was looking at how much content that there is out there on upserving. And it reminded me that it's never a lack of knowledge on why you're not good at something at this job, right? There's always a wealth of available information that you can be utilizing and getting better at. And what I find with a lot of reps, it's lack of implementation. And so my goal is that you, you know, get better at implementing. Like if you, if you take nothing else from this message, whether it's, you know, you take some upserving nuggets or whatnot, but I want you to get better at implementing information. Because by getting better at implementing, you'll just naturally get better at everything else in the job. And sometimes I feel like the reason why we don't implement or even why the reason I don't implement things is because there's too much information. Anyone agree with that one? Like, what do I start with? And sometimes within Cutco, right? It's getting good at in events, get good at new customer, get good at past customer, get good at handling objections, get good at upserving. Upserving is one of those things that it's going to move the needle the most in a lot of your business. But if you're not good at closing, you might need to get better at closing before you get better at upserving. However, you still want to make sure you're getting good at upserving because it's something that's still will really move the needle for you. Now, if I was to ask you, uh, what are the rules of upserving? Does anybody know those already? Besides Tuck. Yeah, feel free to just interact, yeah. So, I mean, did you want me to raise my hand actually? Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I mean, isn't that where you just kind of like suggest like, well, I noticed that you'd really, you kind of would use this, oh, you're vegan and you eat lots of squash. How about the hearty slice or something like that, right? So, so that would be part of the process of upserving for sure. Um, not necessarily one of the rules. I, I guess it could be a, a rule, which is always to offer something, um, which is that is one of the rules would would one of the rules be to already close them on something so you're like observing if somebody already said no so like would it be to first close yep so rule one is close the order right because you don't want to be observing something before you have an order closed right you can talk about packages and programs and you know position things but it's always easier to upsell more after you get the initial order closed. So get the credit card is, is the rule, <laughs> right? Get the credit card. And if you're doing it on the app, you know, like that's okay. You can ask for the credit card before you get to that phase of uh, writing, like filling it out in the app, because then you can have the credit card and still add more to the order. And once you have the credit card, uh, Deanna Scortino, she says, that's where it's game on. Because most reps, what happens is they, they get a credit card and they go, oh, like it's over. <laughs> like I got an order. That's when you should go, oh, now how big can I get this order? Right. And sometimes that's just by asking for more packages kind of how you're staying, Stephanie, like, hey, suggesting different things. 
So get the credit card is rule one. Rule two is always offer. If I were to ask you, you know, how often are you asking for another upserve after you get an order, what would it be? And if you're not asking 10 out of 10 times, then you need to get better at asking for additional upserves. And that that's part of what we're going to teach you on how to get good at this. But just even tracking, hey, did I ask for an upserve on every order? And I do this, I had a show this last week and I was looking at my orders this last week and I was, I was like, did I ask? Did I ask? Did I ask? And making sure that I asked. And then I was just looking at, oh, cool. How much did I upserve based on that? So rule one, get the credit card. Rule two, always offer. Rule three, always offer again. And rule four, offer until they're done. I mean, you guys saw Vernon posted in the chat. He had a 4K order. What did that start out at? I don't even know. Let's see. So his order started at 15 clubmates, upserve two flatware place settings, upserve 10 pizza cutters, upserved uh, shears, upserved a basic homemaker set, upserved a five piece set. And then, so I don't know if he started at the shears and then went up from there or went down. It sounds like he started at the shears and probably up on everything else. So it's exciting, right? One, one phone call probably took him, I mean, no, and Vern, he probably took like 30 minutes on that call, <laughs> just watching him work at the booth, but uh, it's exciting, right? And it started with something that was probably a hundred CPO because the customer is the only one that knows how much money that they have to spend. And your job is to help them spend that money. And then a lot of times too, after you're done closing, it's the what's next conversation and planting seeds for whatever's next. And sometimes when you're doing that, you can actually create more interest today for that order, right? Sometimes they're like, oh, I didn't know you had this, right? And then I might switch and position into pitching cookware after I closed an order and after I was like making them feel good about the order. And I was listening to a call yesterday by Brian Carter on upserving. And sometimes we go into upserving too quickly that we need to give the customer room to breathe. So once you close an order, it doesn't mean like, hey, right away, I'm gonna go upserve, <laughs> right? Like some, some reps, they just go, all right, now it's time to upserve. Make the customer feel good about what they bought. You know, reassure them that they're making a great decision by buying Cutco today. Hey, Angela, you're going to love your Cutco today. You're going to have it forever. You're going to use it next 20, 30, 40 years. It's going to be a new thing that you can pass down to the kids. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Hey, just so you know, and this is one of my favorite upserving lines. Just so you know, one of the things I love to do with my customers is make a wish list of anything else that they like. This way I can keep it on file in case it ever goes on sale. So just so you know, one of the things I love to do with all my customers is make a wish list of anything else that you like for yourself or for gifts. This way, if it ever goes on sale, I can keep you in the loop about it or I can let you know. And, you know, sometimes it's just upserving is also just paying attention throughout the, the demo, or if you're at the booth, paying attention to what the customer's looking at, or if they're, if you, 
if I see a customer pick up flatware and I'm demoing knives, I don't necessarily go right into a flatware pitch, but I make a mental note, make sure that's probably the first thing I observe. Or if they say, oh, I love the cookware or, oh my God, you have cookware? Oh yeah. Yeah, I can definitely tell you about that um, here, here in a little bit. And what's cool is if you, if you bundle that, that's where you, the savings get really crazy. And then I transition back into the knives because so many times I feel like what'll happen is a confused customer never buys. So if I'm trying to like pitch cookware and there will be times where I just feel like that's the better opportunity. So I will transition there, but I want to create the most CPO in the smallest amount of time. So where is the highest CPO um, going to be created? Is it, if it's knives, I'm going to go and stay focused on the knives. And so I'm going to give you some of the interest phrasing and some of the lines that Matt Graves has. But what I would say is with upserving, what is your kind of 30 second pitch on each package and program? Do you know what all the packages and programs are? Right, I know Josh Muller and, and Nick talk about this a lot. Every package, every program, every customer, every time. So we sell knife sets, we sell cookware, we sell flatware, we sell family program and gifts, we sell business gifts and realtor gifts. Um, I don't know if I mentioned accessory packages, hunting and outdoor packages, and then partner products. Am I missing anything? Say upgrade. Knives, upgrade. Yeah, yeah. And so with upserving too, what's your first go-to upserves? You know, what are your kind of back pocket specials? And there's different philosophies on what to upserve first. Sometimes it's just upserve something they're like most interested in first. So if they showed interest in the scissors or showed interest in the steak knives or showed interest in some of the gadgets, just knowing, let's say they, they bought a set on a five pay. Hey, oh, Mr. Jones, I know you, you said you love the scissors there and you might add them down the road. I mean, if you just add them today, they're 25 bucks extra or 30 bucks extra on the five pay or whatever it is. 125 divided by five. Would you, would you want to just add those? Hey, Miss Jones, I know you, you mentioned you, you really like could use some steak knives. I mean, by the way, the more you get, the more you save. I mean, if you just add these here today, it's just right. If it's like 320, that's 320 divided by five. That's like an extra 65 bucks a month to add four of the steak knives. Would you wanna do that? And sometimes the thing with upserving, just because they say no to one offer doesn't mean they're not interested in other offers. Have you ever said no to something and then like, oh, I, I'm trying to think of an, an analogy. I think about like when you go out to eat, like somebody's like, oh, do you want this appetizer or this appetizer? You're like, nah, I don't want that. But maybe you like the main course more than everything else, or maybe you're more into dessert. So each person's kind of into different things. And so just because they say no to maybe a small upserve doesn't mean they might not be interested in a bigger upserve of like cookware or flatware. And the other thing to remember too, when, when upserving, it's something you're doing for the customer. People love to buy, but they hate to be sold. 
And when value is higher than price, people buy. And it's remembering like, what is it, what is their pain points for whatever package and program that you're selling? You know, what is the solution that you're offering for the customer? Because there's so many times where like, we wanna sell something where if we just solve a problem, the customer is gonna sell themselves on why they should get it. <laughs> Some say no to cheese sticks, but say yes to steak. Um, yes, very true. And so um, within upserving too, think about, hey, if you're selling like a five piece, what can you do to upserve that to a homemaker set? Hey, Ms. Jones, I know you, uh, we got you started with this set here. You're gonna love it. Hey, by the way, I know you might, I know you mentioned this would be the set that you'd wanna do eventually down the road. I mean, if you don't mind, um, I can show you what that would look like real quick if you were to do it today. Or hey, if I did something a little extra special for you to do this today, would it be something you might consider? And this is after you close that initial order. And you might've done that to close the initial order. Like, hey, I did something extra special for you. But it's making the customer feel good throughout that process. If you sold a homemaker, could you upserve it to an Ulti set? If you sold an upgrade, could you just plant the idea of giving out their old set, like let's say they had a homemaker initially and you sold them an upgrade at the booth. What if you go from that upgrade to just a brand new ultimate set? Hey, Miss Jones, what a lot of customers like to do is they actually, they just get the whole brand new set instead and then gift out their old set to one of the kids if i did something a little extra special and went above and beyond for you would it be something you'd be open to and sometimes it's just getting them open to the idea of it you know so remembering to have fun through the upselling process. Because if you feel stressed out or if you feel like, ah, anybody ever feel like that in closing? Breathe, okay? Because if you feel that way, guess how the customer feels, right? And how do we want the customer to feel? Relaxed, easy, fun. So sometimes with upserving, I might say, oh, hey, just for fun, can I show you what that would be like? Or, hey, just for grins, can I show you what that, be, what that would be like? And I'm not giving you necessarily all the interest phrasing for every package and program because that's going to be in the Matt Graves document that I share. And if you have questions, I can, you know, go through any of it, by the way. Um, and then one line, I, I think I learned it from Fonz was, hey, if you see yourself uh, doing it down the road anyways, it'll take like a minute to show you. So it'd be worth it to just check it out real quick. Because sometimes it's just getting them interested or open to hearing about it because then cut code does the work for you all right let me double check my notes
And then I'll pause there. Any questions on anything I covered so far? I uh, I think I do. Um, it might be it might be in the document, but um, kind of what's what's the uh, intro into like upselling them? Like they said, like the homemaker was right for them because you know you you go you do the three set close, and then say the homemaker's right for them. Is it you only kind of upsell to the signature if they showed an interest already in a Siggy even ultimate, or do you just kind of you just for fun you see what happens? What do you think? I think I think there's nothing wrong with introducing it if like they like the shears or something like that or you know everyone loves the cheese knife. I'm sure they thought that was pretty cool. Um, I've never met a person who doesn't think the cheese knife's cool, so I think probably always just show yeah, them. I mean I I'd say go for it. Yeah. Right. Uh Richard Branson, I don't know if you know him, but he's famous for saying, Hey, let's give it a go. All right uh, oh baby virgin mobile guy is that him i mean virgin everything basically virgin. okay okay yeah he, I know. yeah he's got a fun story okay. <laughs> I, I could ask me about some of his uh failed businesses one time uh, will do that'd be great um but give it a go i mean and you know just remember like just because they didn't say yes to the siggy the first time when you offered it, it might be because they they don't have enough value in those pieces. So when you when you're up serving, it's just remembering to build value in the pieces that they're not getting in the homemaker. Um, and and then also just asking, hey, you know, um, would this maybe fit the budget for you if you were to do this? You know, one line that um, I know Jason will use a lot when up serving like bigger packages he'll he'll use it to kind of gauge whether or not to even pitch the package and this is typically at a busier show so he's trying to identify hey should i spend another three minutes pitching cookware to this person or talk to that person that's waiting in line essentially so he might say something hey by the way if you fell in love with the cookware and it was like the perfect set. I mean, would an extra 200 to 400 bucks fit the budget today or maybe fit the budget today? And if they say no to that, then I, I'm probably not gonna do it a ton to pitch the cookware. But if they give me the green light and say yes to that, that's like literally all I have to do at that point is sell them on the cookware, <laughs> right? Like, um. And that, that's the thing, like which packages and programs do you need to get better at so that you can get better at upserving? And of course, if you're not great at the new customer or the Cutco owner approach, stay there, right? Like, cause you're gonna sell more on just selling to customers like that. But, you know, if you can get good at a couple interest phrasing and get good at, hey, what's what's the one package or program that you want to get good at upserving? That's going to be your, hey, every time I'm going to at least offer the offer the cookware or offer the flatware. Uh, let's see. And then are these uh, packages, are they on the Matt Graves document that you're going to share? Yeah, so it's, and I know I'm not necessarily giving a lot of one-liners here. I'm sure. gonna I'm gonna throw it in the chat here, um, and you guys can see it. Oh Lord, why is it doing that to me? Sorry, I'm like in Zoom, but it's not sending to the chat. There we go. And you should be able to view this document. Let me know if for some reason you can't. And let's see. And then the other thing too with uh, upserving different packages and programs is 
figuring out which is the priority first, second, and third. So I might ask, you know, hey, in, in a perfect world, of course, you would have everything Cutco. Um, just so I know, which would be more of a priority? Would it be more the, the cookware next or more like the flatware next or more like the accessory bundle package next? So that like helps me if they're interested in a couple of the programs, but maybe it's not in the budget for all of them, then I can identify, hey, what's first, second, third? And I'll make a note of that. So then I know one, I'm gonna try to close on whatever their first package is first, but then second and third, I'm gonna have a note for the next time I see that customer. You know, what would it look like for your business to increase your average order by $200? You know, it's selling more in less time and not any more amount of work. And then you really become a consultant to the customer and not just a salesperson. The, the other one that I, I like to observe is, is a family program. So getting them started with gifts. Because once you get somebody sold on the idea of giving Cutco, guess what's going to happen? When they give it out, they're going to have people that love them for giving them the Cutco. And then they're going to come back to buy more Cutco again and again and again. So even if you don't sell them a full set on the family program, just getting them started with a few knives for somebody will help create more sales in the future by that. Based on your orders so far, Tuck, or? Very nice. So, and that's yeah. the thing too with, with upserving is let's say you don't close them on a big package deal, but they have interest in cookware. Get them started with a few pans. Hey, you know what a lot of my customers do is they try out a few of their favorite pieces. And then whenever you want to upgrade, you can just upgrade to the rest of the set. Which ones are your couple favorite pieces? Okay, can I show you how that would look? And it just asking for permission to show them and what's the worst that they're gonna say? Get out of my house, I hate you. <laughs> no, they're gonna say no, right? And same thing with flatware, right? If you can't close a full chest because maybe it's out of the budget. Hey, well, what a lot of my customers like to do is they like to get started with uh, at least a four, four piece place setting or four, four or five piece place settings. Can I show you how that would look real quick? And then with the family program, giving gifts, Sometimes it's also giving them ideas on how they can use it. So I tell a lot of stories. Yeah, so one of my customers, they actually bought three of these homemaker sets for their daughters, but they, they didn't gift it all at once. <laughs> she kind of taught me this actually. She uh, gifted it out over time. So she turned it into multiple gifts. So instead of it being $1,500 on one gift, it became 100 to $200 per gift and then she had gifts for the next three to five years. And you wanna know the best part about it? Literally her daughters are always looking forward to the next piece of Cutco that they have. The other thing is always, always, always make sure you're asking if they run a business, but it, it's not even if they run a business, it's do they work for a company that gives gifts? 
you know, I think so many people learn the business gift program and are like, oh, well, if they don't uh, run a business, I can't sell them gifts. It's like, no, no, no. Hey, do you, hey, real quick question. Do you work, do you uh, run a business or work with a company that gives gifts to like clients or employees? And more than likely, they do. I mean, if they work as a teacher, they might not as much. You know, if they work in certain industries, it's less likely. But I met a friend that literally hung out with and like at the bars and I saw him walking his dog and I was like, never even asked him what he did. And it, found out he's an architect. And I was like, hey, does your company give gifts by chance? And he said, yeah, actually they do. And then the company that hires us actually gives even more gifts. So they would be the one to talk to. And so I'm gonna get an introduction to a company that would probably have the potential to do a thousand plus gifts. And one thing I'll say is if, if you aren't gonna follow up on the lead, you can give it to me or Tuck. And we will definitely follow up on it and gladly tip you out a percentage of the, of the sale. Let's see, last things that we'd want to cover here. So remembering the, remembering the uh, wish list, right? And hey, I do this with all my customers. What would you say would be on your future wish list or next on your priority list? Um, another thing that's in the document is talking about 10 pays or 15 pays. So sometimes it's the customer, they can afford $400 a month, but putting it to $800 a month by adding cookware or flatware might be a little bit of a stretch. So you might ask something, hey, if there's a way that we can get you this with the deal and it be $400 a month, would that be something you'd be open to? And then what you do is it's essentially writing up two orders, right? So you'll write up the first order, process it today, and then the, the cookware order or the flatware order would be going through six months from now. And you just wanna make sure you have proper systems to make sure that that order gets entered six months from now. And then what you do is you just explain to them, hey, by the way, it's just part of our layaway program. So once your uh, fifth payment's done, your sixth payment will, will hit and then that product will be shipped out. And then it's just, you know, the four more times of this. And I don't do that a lot, but it, it's a way to add an extra package because I'd rather have CPO today than CPO six months from now. But it is a way to, you know, if, if for some reason it's, it's too much today, but they're definitely interested in it. And then what you're doing is you're, you're not having to follow up six months from now to be like, hey, do you want to add that? it's already queued up. And then what I do is I, I literally uh, upload it to Google Drive with all the info. And then I put a reminder in my calendar and then my assistants just enter them. Um, and that's like a super easy thing. So I will uh, wrap up here. I mean, the biggest thing is, you know, what are you implementing from this message? And what I would do is, really come back to this message, either listen to the recording, listen on to some other upserving messages, but think about what it will actually do for your business to be increasing those orders. And what I will say too, anytime you implement new information, the uh, challenge is, is it probably doesn't work the first time. Maybe it does. And it, and it's like, you go sell like a flatware chest on an upserve, like the first time you try it, but don't stop trying because it like was hard or because it was uncomfortable. Keep doing it and keep getting better at it. 
because by implementing the information, that's how you're going to really up level your business. And just imagine, right? Tuck put 47 K extra that he would have sold. I mean, I bet you on this call, probably at least a couple hundred thousand dollars more, if not based on what you sold so far this year, for sure comboed between everyone by just increasing that this year, right? So what, what would that look like would be awesome. Uh, so make sure you get the credit card, then always offer, always offer again, offer till they're done. And then what are those small package upserves that you can do? And then what's gonna be maybe your one or two big package upserve that you go after and that you're just gonna commit to 100% and then uh, you know, post in the group me about, hey, I learned all this amazing upserving stuff from Josh and, uh, and I upserved all this awesome stuff. So yeah, I'll take a couple Q and A and then uh, I'll throw my info in the chat. And what I would love for, for all of you is to post your biggest takeaway in the group me and what you're going to implement right away. Yeah, Abs, you had a question? Yeah, um, <clears throat> what are like two or three talks messages that you would listen to uh, if you had like shows coming up next month and you wanted to crush it, stuff that you would listen to weekly, daily, whatever, what are three talks that you would recommend? Two or three talks. Um, I mean, it, it depends. It's probably different for everybody. So I get well, well-rounded just on, I don't know, handling objections, you know, closing at the, I, I would, I'd probably listen to any of the net audios on like new customer um or cutco owner personally i'd probably do yeah I, I would do either new customer message or cutco owner message from net which if you guys don't have like the cutco events app i would download that and then um but i'm sure if you post in the group me asking about hey where can i find these messages Cool. I, I can send you some playlists too, I'm sure. So abs, I also have a, a, a YouTube playlist with different approaches. I put it in the chat before, but I could repost it to the group me for y'all. You know, I think I actually might have that one. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's full of gold on there. And then I don't know if I skipped you, Angela, because I know you had a question when I was talking about Tenpei, so. You answered it as you were going. Okay. And then uh, Stephanie? Yeah, so my question was kind of on the 10 pay stuff too. So I've had customers that were like, well, if I could spread it out, I would totally get it. And I didn't know that was like an option. Should I call them back and be like, hey, guess what I found out? I can lower your payment to whatever with that thing that you super loved. Or is that like? I mean, it doesn't hurt to try. Um, I obviously, it's like, I want to close more upfront, but I will use that as an option. Like I've closed ultimates on 10 pays because they were like, oh, I'm either going to get everything or get nothing. Right. But couldn't afford the, whatever, like the 650. And I was like, mm -hmm. Hey, if we can, if we can lower your payment a little bit where it would make sense in the budget and you still get everything that you want, would that be something you're open to? Okay. And, and then you just have to break the setup at that point. Yeah. And so what I do typically with that, I mean, you could just ask me when, when, uh, when you're ready to cross that bridge, I guess, but it, it's like, I get them, usually I'll get them the block and then I'll get them like, not everything that's awesome in the set. Like I'll still just get like part of the set and then I'll still save some of the really cool pieces for the second half. Cause I don't want them to go, oh, well, this is all I need. You know, I want them right. looking forward to things. Like I did a couple cities that way because it was just like budget. Yeah, I've been running into that a lot. And they're like, well, if we could do lower payments, that'd be great. And I was just like, sorry, I don't think I can. 
and and so, sometimes i will say like a caveat it's it could just be you getting better at handling objections oh and, for sure for sure yeah i'm still new at this i feel I, like i wouldn't say that's like a thing i'm doing often it might literally be like five percent of the time so okay. i would hate for you to be like oh well i'm gonna do this thing and then still not close the order because of it right so right. um right. i would do your best to close an initial order before you're offering something like that awesome okay gotcha thank you mm -hmm. any other uh questions or maybe if anyone has like a key couple takeaways that they wanted to share just because it uh people might go oh that was actually really good i didn't write that one down So I liked the, um, at the beginning, I thought that was really good where you said, uh, after you close, don't jump right into, well, just so you know, you can add 20 bucks a month and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> it's give them more room to breathe, reassure them, hey, this is awesome. You're going to love your cut go. You get to pass it down to your kids, kids, kids. You're going to have this for the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and then they're like, yeah, this is awesome. And then you try, jump right into just so you know, just for fun, um, if you added this or I saw you like this. I like that because I don't think I've ever done that. I definitely have been like, hey, I know you like this. I like, oh, I got the credit card. Awesome. Just so you know, you like the shears. That's an extra, you know, 20 bucks a month for five months. Would you like to do that today? I've definitely never reassured them. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love the share. Uh, I'll throw my info in the group me. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you guys have questions and or if you're like, hey, I'm just really excited and I implemented this thing. Um, you know, I think our events team is a great resource to help you. And sometimes you might not even know what you need help with, um, but just even reaching out uh, somebody that's been doing this a little bit longer will be able to tell you. And then um, sometimes, at least for me, when I was newer, I didn't want to reach out because I was like, well, like, what am I, what value can I add? I will say you, one, add value by asking questions because then it makes us think about what we're doing at a higher level. And then it helps us also identify what's the 20% that creates the 80%. So sometimes by just asking those questions, it makes us better at our job. And I promise you, there's like most of the people that are, I, I would say 99% of the people in the group me, like they love to help people. So, <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not going to bother. Now, the worst thing you can do though, is to have calls with people and then just not implement that that's what i will say though so um the greatest compliment to someone who's helping you is to actually do what they you know tell you and and i i do that all the time with uh jason you know i'm like hey i'm paying for all this mentoring am i implementing this information what else do i need to implement um and Tuck, you feel free to stop the recording too at this point. Sounds good. Yeah, and I uh, just want to wrap up last couple uh, reminders. Uh, one, again, like Josh said, make sure to post your takeaways in the chat. Uh, make sure to implement. Like I said, it's the biggest compliment you can give to a speaker. Two, remember we are having a drawing at the end of the summer. So everyone who is on this call, you're entered. Uh, in that drawing and it's cumulative. So uh, by the end of the, uh, the summer there, every uh, entry gets you closer to 300 bucks worth of free cut go. Uh, and then our next call uh, will be, uh, I think it's, uh, it's two weeks from August 4th. I think it's uh, two weeks. So make sure to put that in the calendar. There'll be reminders on that as well. And uh, thank you again, Josh, for coming on and giving a message. Make sure everybody, uh, you know, Say thank you to Josh and uh, yeah. Thanks, Josh. Thank you.